What's up guys and welcome to part three of our Clone Wars season seven more long form discussion. So today today's episode was on the wings of Kiradax, which again, just a reminder, I saw the story reels uh, five years ago. Molly has never seen these stories. Nope. So what were your first impressions? I liked it. Um, it felt short and I think it was it was a bit shorter than the other episodes. It was a lot of action. I feel like it was just the natural part two of the last episode. Yeah. Uh, and interestingly, so like they've been making changes this whole time to the original reels. And this one was shorter. They cut out like a two, three minute scene, which I can understand. But it's also like, huh, I wonder why they did it because they had plenty of room and especially on disney plus it's like you can make these as long as you want but there was a scene at the start of the episode where uh, anakin and wat tambor kind of talk through the view screens and then tambor brings out one of the pull texts and uses the uh or organic uh disintegrator whatever that little ball weapon was yeah he, he tests it out on one of the natives and uh we get to see what it does and that's it I mean, that's, I mean, that's torture. I feel like that was okay to cut out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's something where, like, we don't have to know what this weapon does because it ultimately does nothing. It's really just a little ticking time bomb where our heroes are like, we have to get out of here. Um, and yeah, we don't need another reason to hate the Watt Tambor and the Techno Union. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed, uh, Anakin... Every episode that we get so far in this season, I, we see a little bit more and more of his frustrations. So when he finds out that there's no backup coming, he's like, oh, we should have known we were doing this alone from the beginning when we agreed to do this. And I don't know. He just, like, his frustrations are building. Yeah, I agree. And that was in the original reel, but I think they're amping it up a little bit more where they were like, Especially in the last episode, I think there's this whole bit where they kind of wait around to make sure that their mission is approved by the Jedi Council. And in this one, it's a lot faster where Anakin, like Obi-Wan says something about waiting for approval and Anakin's like, we're going by. <laughs> so Anakin's doing something because he knows and feels that it's right. He's going to help Rex rescue a friend. Uh, but yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's like the Jedi aren't there when it like exceeds their mandate or whatever even if it's the right thing to do yeah otherwise i don't know this there was like a, a long shot in this episode with no dialogue that felt a little bit awkward to me and it was it was cool because it was like lots of action happening but they're they were just like signaling to each other and it was just like no dialogue for a while and i don't know if that was part of the original episode no it was Okay. I mean, this episode is, like you said, part two of what I would... Th this middle part is, like, the most connected, I think, where the second part leads directly into the third, and they tell one whole story. And, yeah, this definitely felt like the second half, or it was the climax that the first half built to. So, yeah, a lot of action, not a ton of dialogue, so it makes it a little bit harder mm -hmm. to talk about what this episode means and stuff, but... Yeah. Uh, there were two fortune cookies because we have the one, the official one that was released today, but there was an original one for the reels back in 2015 as well. Um, let's talk about the real one for the, the R E E L one first. <laughs> uh, it was in war. There's no such thing as neutrality. Mm -hmm. And I think I understand why they changed this one because this is a theme that has happened so many times in the clone wars and in Star Wars since the Clone Wars. So it's like, all right, let's mix it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's fine to keep going back to this idea, but yeah, just change it up. Change the wording. <laughs> I mean, it's a good theme. And uh, the, I, I'm going to talk about this in a video soon, but people got all in a uproar over the High Republic stuff and the whiteboard and it said that Star Wars is not pro-war. And then they were screaming about how, oh, well, they think Star Wars is anti-war and that means it's going to be called Star Peace now and stuff. And like anti-war and not pro-war are different things. And I think that Star Wars has always been about, yes, sometimes you have to fight 
Uh, but the key is knowing when it's appropriate and when it's not. When are you fighting just because or when are you fighting to uh, save your people or someone else? And that's something that Star Wars has continually explored. The Clone Wars alone, like I can think off the top of my head, the episode with the Lermans. I keep wanting to call them Lemurians. Uh, I don't know what that's from. It's from something. but the, the I just Lermans. call them lemurs. I mean, I don't even try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the little monkey people, uh, they, they are like the, the the jedi come to them and they're like we don't want your war and then the separatists attack and it's like well you have to stand up and fight and this is a very similar thing mm -hmm. the poltecs are like we didn't want any part of your war we were just trying to like keep our heads down not be noticed uh and get by which plays into the actual moral but yeah it, it's just something that star wars has done a lot yeah another thing i noticed about this episode is just a little bit goofier uh, so far this season it's been fairly serious and there was a couple of lines like anakin uses the force to get wrecker up and out of the room and he just is like oh what's going on and a lot of those were added stop it <laughs> like a lot of the dialogue was kept the same but those specifically uh, originally wrecker just kind of floats up with no problem mm -hmm. but and then at one point he like tosses Rex up into the air to so that he can help Anakin take down those the Octoptara tridroid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those. Um, and that was just kind of silly because I, I don't know that that happens often. But I guess that's just like this is also a violent episode. I mean, there were a couple of like the Poltex being shot and killed where I was like, oh, that's a little brutal. So it's probably to try to cut some of that tension. Um, Anakin taking down that droid reminded me of the Clone Wars movie yeah, a lot. Yeah, for sure. Because he does that to like two or three of them. <laughs> <laughs> that always makes me think of Legolas and the the Oliphants. Yeah. Um, the other moral of this story, the new one, uh, was that survival is one step on the path to living, which... We haven't talked about Battlestar in like a week, so let's do that. <laughs> it immediately made me think of uh, in the first two episodes, the miniseries, uh, at the end, Adama lies and says like, oh, Earth is out there and we're going to find it. And uh, Roslyn, the president, knows that that's not true. And he says that he lied because it's not enough to just survive. People need to have something to live for. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought of immediately. Yeah, and it works both for um, the case of the people on this planet, and it also kind of works for Echo's situation. Yeah, and I think they changed this so that it would be more personal to Echo. A lot of the changes that have been made to this season so far, it's like, we're going to make this more about Rex or Anakin and now Echo. Yeah. And yes, we, we found out last week that Echo had survived, but what does that mean? Is he like a walking husk? And pretty f quickly you realize, no, like he's cracking jokes. He is the way he kind of used to be. Mm -hmm. And that's, he's hoping that things will go back to normal. And so is Rex. But then the end, it, it, it leaves us on kind of a weird, ominous note because he, I forget what the line is, but... It's like back to normal, I guess. And then they they pan back and do like a full body shot just to show you once again, Echo is never going to look the same <laughs> yeah. um, for one. And he just kind of had the, had this like dead look in his face like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an interesting thing because I was like, I don't remember this being so ominous and... Uh, in the original reel, Rex just says, like, things will go back to normal, and Echo, like, smiles, and it's a triumphant music thing. Everything feels good. Mm -hmm. And this one, Echo kind of has a more solemn look on his face, and he's like, yeah, back to normal. And it's, I don't know if it's, yeah, like you're saying, where it's like, well, I can never be like I was, uh, at least physically, or if he knows something that they don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, this episode took some stuff out didn't add much back in. So now I'm wondering if that's just a little bit of setup because it's like, oh, episode four is going to be way different. Yeah, I could definitely see that. I've seen a few people say that, you know, this episode was lacking and boring and they took too much out. But if you think back to 
all the other Clone Wars episodes, there are tons of episodes that are like this one that are just kind of like segues into the next episode. Yeah, just a bunch of action. Yeah. Like this to me was one of the ones that really felt like uh, an old serial. Uh, the way that like Indiana Jones was based off of them and the Clone Wars obviously is based on them where uh, you have that little opening narration and it's like kind of an adventure of the week and they usually end on cliffhangers and mm -hmm. You have all these like over the top villains, and Wat Tambor is definitely that. So, oh, yeah, I love the part where he like looks in and sees all the bombs, and his little uh, destroyer ball is in there, and he goes, Oh, no. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, it's classic Clone Wars kind of silly humor. I mean, yeah. Um, so what do you think is in store for next week i won't talk about the real uh because i don't want to spoil anything and it, i mean it might be different anyway so i mean what do you think that one line is hinting at which line the, uh, the last little um yeah back to normal mm -hmm. what do you think that moment with echo means i mean i have to assume that the next episode is going to dive into echo and his ptsd and what that means for him and it's like how the other people are going to react seeing him back. I'm sure they'll be happy to see him, but I feel like he's not going to feel like he fits in anymore. Hmm. And he said something like he knows all of their plans, just like they took all of the stuff out of his head. So I did want to say that I like that. There's a lot of things of Echo turning the techno union against itself like he now has a little astromech connection port and he was able to like open up that hatch for them to escape and yeah he knows all these details of the city yeah so it's hard enough being a clone um and just like your purpose in life is to fight in this war but now he was once a clone and now is like half clone half droid machine so i feel like his identity is gonna be up in the air in the next episode. And I don't know what that means, but... Well, I think that he can kind of continue to carry on that theme of the first episode where it's like embrace people's differences as strengths and not weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And it's fitting that he is working alongside the Bad Batch. So th there is all that. Uh, but I I'm worried that there was like this little edge, I don't know, sinister edge to his voice. I hope it's nothing like oh god he's a sleeper agent now or something <laughs> uh he's got some code some techno union code i kind of hope that it's more along the lines of he some he knows a little bit more about order 66 because this was never meant to be part of the final season but now that it is it's like okay we might need to tie this into the other episodes a little bit more mm -hmm. and we know we're building to uh revenge of the sith except from a different point of view yeah so it would be good to have a little hint about Order 66 in there. There was another line that I thought was interesting. I don't know that it's going to lead to anything, but the members of the Bad Batch are kind of standing back where, while uh, Anakin is kind of celebrating with the people on the planet. I forget. They're... The Poltex. The Poltex. Um, and they're like, oh, the Jedi get all the recognition. And I was like, oh, interesting. Like, I wonder if they start to get annoyed with Anakin at some point. But I don't know. I think they're starting to get in a groove with each other. Yeah. So I, I always get asked, like, did the Bad Batch participate in Order 66? And I'm like, I would assume so. I mean, I guess it depends on if they were on a mission with a Jedi at the time. But I'd, I'd hate to be around Wrecker. Oh, my goodness. When Order 66 happens. <laughs> I'll kill you in the bench press you <laughs> yeah oh that that was really cool when he got underneath one of the legs mm -hmm. of the the massive octodroid thing <laughs> yeah um anything else to say about this episode i don't think so it's a, like it's it's hard to really talk about the episodes that are i mean this was just like two extended action sequences the escape and then the defense of uh the poltex city mm -hmm. and like you said, there wasn't a lot of talking in the second half. And they were just like, the Jedi are welcome 
back anytime. We're your allies now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining up right at the end of the war. <laughs> but I mean, the I, I, we say it every week, but it looks great. It's the best the show has ever looked. The animation's awesome. I just love seeing the advances and just like little facial movements. You can read the emotion a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Someone on Twitter pointed out that inside Watt Tambor's office, I guess, where they had Echo up in that little chamber was very Mass Effect-like. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I don't know. Just thought I'd point that out. Watt Tambor's got kind of a steampunk feel to him, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Little dials and breather masks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's it for On the Wings of Kiradax. Uh, let us know what you thought of the episode down in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And consider checking out our Patreon page where we are doing audio commentaries for all these new episodes. The first two episodes are up right now, and we will do this third one as soon as we can. But as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.